This video shows you a prediction for the 2024 Warriors that will happen. Based off the news about CP3 potentially not wanting to come off the bench and Draymond saying he still isn't a fan of Paul until they quote unquote talk amongst men, what I'm about to say may be a hot take. Obviously Denver winning, they're a very complete team and they played amazing, Jokic is, is, is awesome, Jamal Murray. So every other team is trying to make adjustments and trying to get better. Even when you win, you try to get better every year and some moves are, may seem drastic, some might be a little fine tweaks, but I think every team is trying to take stock of what they have and for us it was about trying to make the pieces fit a little bit better, try to give us more versatility on both sides of the ball. And we understand our core is back and we're adding CP, some other vets that we've can really help us fill out the rotation and increase our depth. We had two young guys who were in their third year, JK and, and Moses Moody, have huge opportunities to you know take another step in their career. So that's where we are and we feel like our team makes a lot more sense this year. Let me preface this by saying Draymond Green needs to stop talking sideways about CP3, and in terms of what I covered in yesterday's video, he needs to stop talking about Jordan Poole and the punch entirely. Additionally, CP3 needs to accept a bench role, as in an interview, Chris stated that he expected to be starting next to the Splash Bros. Assuming he and Draymond know their place as supporting voices and on-court contributors surrounding Stephen Curry, let us proceed under that assumption. Lest we forget, the 2022 Warriors behind an all-time great carrying from Stephen Curry and with the scoring support of all-star Andrew Wiggins, pulled off championship number four in the span of eight years. But after finishing as the number six seed in 2023, it was a rough year for fans in the Bay, as the Warriors could never establish a consistent flow. Nevertheless, trading Jordan Poole, Ryan Rollins, and Patrick Baldwin Jr. for future Hall of Famer Chris Paul, signing Wiley veteran Corey Joseph, signing a stretch big who will fit in perfectly with his floor spacing ability in Dario Saric, and making Draymond Green happy with an extension are savvy moves, especially for a new GM in former NBA player Mike Dunleavy. Stay tuned for why their new point guard rotation with Stefan and Chris to go along with some youngins will make for some on-court popcorn and a prediction about if the dub's identity is actually back as they get set for a still possible quest of a fifth title in under a decade. Right click, just 16% of you watching are subscribed, so please subscribe. Leave a like on this video, it takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. And for a follow back, follow at Hoops on Instagram and Twitter. Any support is greatly appreciated, as making YouTube videos is my profession. Steve Kerr's intricate, extremely tough to execute offensive playbook featuring dicey stagger split screens, back screens into dribble handoffs, and elusive zoom actions, just to name a few, requires players to both fully buy into the system in terms of knowing the ins and outs of every action and having the proper skill set consisting of sound playmaking and shooting chops. Options who play too much hero ball, worry about their playing time, and or can't consistently make the correct reads won't be embraced to the fullest extent in a system that's been run to perfection by the greatest big three of all time in Stephen Curry, Draymond Green, and Clay Thompson. That's why the trade to receive an elite ball handling veteran point guard with a first class basketball IQ in CP3 was ideal. Same thing goes for the pickup of Corey Joseph. While Paul and Joseph are at the back end of their playing days, Kerr will be able to fully count on grizzled veterans who've seen and executed various offensive schemes throughout their careers when Curry takes a rest. Rookie Brandon Pojemski. With the 19th pick, the Golden State Warriors select Brandon Pojemski from Santa Clara University and sophomore Lester Quinones balance out Chris and Corey's veteran presence in the backcourt with upside. Pajemski and Quinones combined for 38 points in the Warriors' first summer league game, in which Golden State won by 15 over Charlotte. Meanwhile, throughout the Dubs' five summer league outings, Brandon averaged six dimes per night, while Lester led the team with a 21.2 point per game average. Stepping out to view the Warriors from an organizational perspective and losing the man who turned this Warrior franchise around by surrounding 2009's seventh overall draft pick with a championship caliber supporting cast in Bob Myers was a tough pill to swallow, 
Myers is one of the greatest executives of all time and had a masterclass of a decade plus long run as the Warriors GM and president of basketball operations. The resume for Myers consists of drafting DPOY along with a four-time All-Star Draymond Green, trading Richard Jefferson, Andres Biedrins, and Brandon Rush in a three-team deal for franchise staple and 2015 Finals MVP Andre Iguodala, receiving Andrew Wiggins in a deal involving D'Angelo Russell, among many other stellar decisions. One of those choices from Myers was committing to keeping the big three of Green, Curry, and Thompson in town by signing them to multiple extensions each. Bob's personal decision to step down came as a jaw-dropper in the not-so-distant wake of a drama-filled 22-23 campaign, which was plotted by the swept-under-the-rug yet inevitably infamous punch. Mike Dunleavy was therefore tasked with a pressure-filled decision in terms of how he'd work out that chemistry in the aftermath of said drama. Trading away three talented prospects, primarily the very much proven top-notch up-and-comer Jordan Poole, wasn't an easy decision by any stretch of the imagination. Jordan was an energy-infusing fan favorite whose upside at the point guard spot signaled that he'd be the future of that position in the post-Stephen Curry era. Thing is, the future and the past have a hard time at meshing simultaneously, and additionally, it's not the post-Stephen Curry era yet, as Wardell evidently has a long way to go, knock on wood if he avoids another major injury. Steph doesn't need other alphas to clash heads with, and as much as Poole had a lot to learn, his young, got that dog in a mentality seemed to bark just a bit, if not bite. That's not to say Jordan is even close to being at fault, he was dealt the toughest hand after the tape leaked, and it therefore seems unfair and wrong that he was the one scapegoated. And it definitely was unfair, but it wasn't the wrong decision to choose their primary assist guy and top defender in Draymond over Jordan. The chemistry was broken after the punch, as Jordan wasn't able to forgive Draymond and the team seemed to split up from there. With JP getting a fresh start in the nation's capital being backed up by Rollins and getting to see the upside of Patrick Baldwin Jr. realized, the veteran, focally championship-minded cast of four-time champions can lock in on what really matters getting back to the promised land. Adding Chris Paul, who not even two years ago was the main point guard on a Phoenix team that went up 2-0 in the finals, as a Gary Payton with the Lakers-esque back end of the career veteran ring chaser who can give you adequate backup minutes, gives you another Hall of Famer to add to the list of battle-tested voices that any given NBA core can never have enough of. With CP3, Chef, Dre, and Clay all bouncing ideas off of one another without a single distraction, expect the vibes on Warriors ground to max out 2022 style, with another champion in Toronto's Kojo to go along with a hungry, ready-to-win former top overall pick for Orlando in Dario Saric, who can catch and release deep-range bombs after picking and popping, in addition to a healthy all-NBA defender in Gary Payton II, and a hopefully developed having been in the gym John Kaminga, Golden State has both a clear direction from a locker room perspective and a clear identity revolving around complementing Green, Curry, and Thompson. For one reason or another, these three could never get on the same page in 2023. Maybe it was the punch, maybe it was Dre not getting the extension that he wanted in 2022 summer. What matters now is, that's all behind them. The starting lineup of Steph, Clay, Wiggins, Dre, and Looney is still debatably the best first five-man unit across the association. The year-to-year -year continuity is definitely stronger than anyone else's in the league. Assuming Dunleavy fills out the backup center position adequately, now each and every one of Golden State's starting five members will be able to rest up properly. Curry will be backed up by a fellow all-time great point guard, Clay with a recovered from a core muscle injury GP2, Wiggs with a steadily morphing phenom in Kaminga, Draymond with the tossed into the equation Saric, and maybe Looney with a Bismack Biombo or Willie Hernan Gomez. Mike's gonna have to pick up a steady backup center sooner rather than later, but you can hopefully see what I'm getting at. The dub's depth will allow them to play more dynamic, maintain legs for when it matters most in the playoffs, not to mention most importantly, backing up the iconic starting five with efficient, down-and-dirty minutes to stem the tide. 
Moody and Kaminga are sort of the outliers in terms of being the youthful, unproven guys. But let's not forget Jordan and Moses were both rookies on the championship team and even had stretches of playing time in the postseason that year. But I'm predicting the Warriors will be back in the mix as an at the very least top four seed and that they'll set themselves up for a fifth championship in under a decade. This was D-Flow, and I'll see you next video.